All right. Well, welcome back, everyone. Uh, today, I've got Charles Hoskinson, the CEO, CEO of IOHK, um, which works a lot on the Cardano platform and the associated um, ADA cur cryptocurrency. Um, he was on about a year ago on this channel to give us kind of the basics of what his role in that company and the Cardano ecosystem is. Um, so I'll put a link here to kind of the basics. If you're not familiar with Cardano, Cardano at all, you might want to check that out first before this interview. Um, but yeah, without further ado, uh, first of all, thanks for coming on. Hello, Charles. Thanks for having me on. Great. So it's been about a year since we talked. And um, one thing I really like about Cardano and, and what IOHK is doing is setting really, you know, kind of detailed roadmaps about what you plan to do and what you've been doing. So I was hoping you could give us just kind of a two or two to three items about what's been going on in the past year, something you're especially proud of that your team has accomplished. Right. That's a, that's a great question. So, uh, you know, when you, you, you do these things, there's a lot of unknowns in the beginning and you, you're, you start aspirational and you say like, ah, I'd like to go solve the world's energy crisis and, uh, you know, uh, feed all the homeless and, you know, build homes for everybody. And then somewhere along the way you say, you know, maybe if I could just get that one guy off the street or, you know, I can get a, that solar panel installed, I feel better about life. And that's exactly what's happened. So in 2015, when we first started the aspirational side, we kind of dreamed up what we imagined the third generation cryptocurrency needed to look like. So we, we had business requirements about interoperability and performance and requirements about how the system would achieve people's thing it requires to pay for. And it also is capable of uh, reaching consensus about where, what direction should it go. So we don't run into this Bitcoin, Bitcoin cash, Ethereum, Ethereum classic style scenario where every time a controversial thing comes up, the system splits. So what's been accomplished? Well. We launched in September of 2017, the first generation product, we called that Byron. It was only on Bittrex uh, and uh, you know, the community was quite small. We were a relatively unknown project. And since that time, we now have a community of about 100,000 people. We listed on 25 different exchanges. Uh, we're in many different marketplaces. We've gone through four major, soon to be five updates to the uh, core software. We've written a uh, half dozen formal specifications about various different aspects of the system. Uh, we've deployed a, a browser-based client. Uh, we have two code bases now, one in Rust, one in Haskell, uh, and we're just about getting ready to roll out the first major protocol in our scalability vision, which is Shelly, uh, the Ouroboros uh, Genesis protocol, and you know, that will soon turn into Ouroboros Hydra. So we had a great research agenda, and entering into 2017, that agenda was really starting to get sped up. But all throughout 2017 and 2018, we learned how to, how to have a product and market, how to work with exchanges, uh, how to work with people. We serviced over 50,000 support tickets on the help desk. Uh, so a lot of great customer feedback, uh, a lot of customer frustration for various different things from connecting to network to uh, you know issues with balances and so forth. But we're working our way through that. So the, really the big accomplishment is just learning how to have a cryptocurrency in market, learning how to uh, have a, a product that can evolve at a reasonable pace and being able to actually execute on the science, you know, because science is so very complicated and it's all new protocols and being able to actually go from the lab to a specification to code and have a reasonable vision of how we're actually going to roll that code out, ship it to people and get it to work. I think that that's what I'm most proud of. It's, it's a hard process. It's a brutal process. Doing it during crypto winter was especially hard <laughs> because while we were making progress and great achievements, the price keeps going down. So it demoralizes people and causes a lot of people to be very harsh and say just things that aren't true. But being able to overcome all of that and keep moving forward and dealing with issues like the Cardano Foundation, having to go through a change of leadership, uh, these were all, all things that we overcame. And they proved that we're resilient and they proved that we know how to execute and that we're going to be here for a long time and we're going to be building for a long time. Yeah, so you mentioned the science behind it all. Another impressive thing about your project is the amount of kind of academics involved and things like that. Um, some really uh, big names, smart people uh, involved in various ways in the project. Um, in the past year, how has that team grown? Have you made any significant um, uh, contributions to that team to, to help push the project along? Yeah, you know, there's great people. Uh, you know, Mattia Fitzi, uh, Peter Gazi, uh, Agalos Gassis, uh, Phil Wadler, Manuel Chakovardi. You know, just to name a few, and there, there's dozens of others. I mean, like some are very young and incredibly promising. For example, uh, Dennis Asindros, he created the entire sidechains group, and he's still a graduate student. Wonderful kid, very smart. He started a career at Google, and then he came into academia a little later in life. Uh, and that's quite unusual to see people be so successful despite that. 
Uh, so, uh, so great team, and uh, I'm very happy uh, that that's progressing along. And in many ways, it's kind of like the Bell Labs of our industry. You know, we we have these foundational, fundamental problems. When Bell Labs was created, they said, "Wow, we're going to connect everybody together." You know, so what are the consequences of telecommunication? What are the consequences of real-time communication across great distances? And how do we actually achieve that uh, that vision? And as a consequence of following that research thread, they invented the semiconductor. You know, they they invented satellites. They created fiber optic cables, you know, there's so much innovation that came out of Bell and the whole field of information theory was created by Claude Shannon. So similarly, we, we're looking at that same thread. We have an overarching goal of building a financial operating system for the planet. And then we're starting to ask, well, what languages does that thing need? What interoperability protocols does that thing need? How, how do we actually reasonably service millions of users and organize them and disseminate information to them and so forth? And you need a research group just like a Bell Labs to carry that out and get it done. And uh, we've staffed some very good people. Their H indexes are incredible. They're recognized within their field as either being the top of the field or near the top of the field. And we also have the ability to attract a lot of young minds who are up and coming. Like uh, we have one uh, uh, PhD student who just finished at ETH Zurich, who uh, his dissertation is recognized as one of the best for that graduating year in the entire continent of Europe. And now he's at ETH, and now he's at University of Edinburgh. And, he helped write the Orbos Genesis paper, and you know he's working on these things. So we, it's great mixture of old and new, and it's a great mixture of scientist and engineer. And uh, now we're adding product management to that layer, so we can have a much better customer focus and customer orientation to it. So these are huge challenges, but uh, I, I'm very happy with the progress overall, and I think we've done a great job as a company. Not to say we've done everything perfectly, but it's been pretty good. Great. So to get into some more specifics, you mentioned earlier about Shelly uh, is imminent. Could you give uh, the viewers a, a better idea of what that aspect of the project is? So basically, uh, there was always going to be a series of iterations to get Cardano to its final state in terms of consensus. So the first is saying, well, we need to bootstrap the system. And these are all new protocols. So when you're bootstrapping the system, you need training wheels on it. So that means you have a federated protocol where a few named known entities, Emergo, IOH case, uh, Card, uh, I, and Cardano Foundation work together and they kind of run the show there. But then there's a path to decentralize that protocol in a very systematic, deterministic way. And so that involves the notion of stake pools and delegation and uh, the, the notion of actually user education to teach them how to do these things. So we're now entering the Shelley era and hopefully we'll be able to start that era in uh, the end of quarter one. And basically what that means is that uh, the general public will now be able to start participating in general, generating blocks and having control of the system. Uh, so it starts off on the test net and just showing people can actually register a stake pool. They can actually delegate, verifying the reward mechanics are working, verifying that all those nuts and bolts look good. And then it goes to the main net. And then what happens is epic by epic, so an epic's every five days in our system, uh, more and more control is gradually given to the stake pools, and eventually the entire system rolls over to a fully decentralized system. So that's the middle part of a you know a three-part research agenda. One was to develop everything and launch a, a federated system. Two was to decentralize that federated system completely, and then three is to introduce the long-term scalability protocols. That's Orbos Hydra. So after we finish the full decentralization, the next step is to uh, add uh, sharding to the system, and we have a pretty good scheme that we've developed in our parallel chains paper and. That's going through a series of refinements at the moment, and that research will converge to a production system as soon as the Shelley era uh, is, uh, is concluded. So that could take a little while, but not a huge amount of time you know, relative to our competitors. Some of these guys have been working on this for five years, and they're okay. still trying to figure this out. Yeah. So for, for people that want to find out more about the development, um, you know, there's a huge conference coming up in April that IOHK is putting on. Could you go into a little bit more detail about what people can expect from the conference and what they can get out of it? Yeah, so if the last three years we've been uh, bringing all of our employees together as just kind of an internal event. So we did it in, uh, in Corfu, Greece. We did it in Malta. You know, we did it in Portugal. And, and then we said, you know, the general public really wants to attend, especially now that we have products that people care about. And so we said, why don't we open up these company events to the general public. So we we're going to fly out every single IOHK employee. It's cost me over a million dollars to do this. It's a very expensive proposition, but everybody's going to be there from Wadler to Duncan to, to Bruno to, uh, to myself. And uh, we're going to talk about the stuff we're working on, the research we're doing, the products we have, our social impact in Africa. We have a class of 23 uh, Ethiopians we're training, and we're going to fly them out and 
and, and they can talk about what they learned. In addition to that, uh, it allows us to actually have direct discussions about what makes a good third generation cryptocurrency. So we're inviting our competitors to come like Definity and Unity and other projects and for them to make the case why what they're building is actually better than Cardano. And hopefully we'll be able to have some great debates. Uh, Rudy Rucker uh, signed up. He's a famous author and uh, writes all these great sci-fi books. Uh, he'll speak there. And, uh, you know, we have a lot of workshops. It's a two-day event, April 17th, 18th. Uh, the second day will be mostly workshop oriented. We're going to have a hackathon. So if you want to learn how to write Bluetooth smart contracts, it's going to be a good place to go. We're going to have a giveaway where um, we have a cryptographic puzzle. And if you solve the puzzle, you can get a wallet with a bunch of ADA in it. Uh, there's going to be a lot of free stuff, uh, and uh, it's basically just a great opportunity to to meet all of our team and get to know what we're working on. Also, if I'm ever going to launch a new product, you tend to launch them at these big events. So, you know, I'm not saying we're going to launch anything, but we might. So that'll be a lot of fun, and uh, our partners will all be there. Mergo is going to be there. Cardano Foundation is going to be there. People building on Cardano are going to come, uh, and uh, we're going to have some great musical guests as well for people who buy VIP tickets. I uh, can't quite announce the bands yet, but they're famous bands that have been around for quite some time. And uh, I'd say they're up there with uh, Journey and the Rolling Stones and so forth. And there's actually two of them, not just one. Uh, so it's going to be uh, it's going to be a great event. And if you like alligators, you can go out to the Everglades and play there. If you like beaches, Miami Beach is right next to it. If uh, you have kids, come on down and then go up to Disney World and uh, you know have some fun. Yeah, that sounds like a great time. I think I'll have to have to get down there for that. So, um, you know, besides uh, Shelley, which you already talked about in detail, in the next year going forward, what are what's one or two of the things you're most excited about personally? Well, this Redeemer Validator Extended UTXO smart contract model that we've developed with Plutus is, is really cool because I think it actually solves tons of stuff. You know, we, we have this, we keep talking about the developer triangle. So you have the server, the client, and that's what we normally think about. But then suddenly you have the blockchain. And... You're saying, well, I'm outsourcing some functionality of my application that I would normally do on Amazon or you know, Azure, and I'm putting it in the blockchain because maybe it's an untrusted, it's a trusted service or something, and you, you don't want to trust the server. So figuring out what runs in the client, what runs in the server, and what runs on a, on a blockchain as a service uh, is, is really a difficult question. And we, we have a vision for how we're going to evolve Daedalus, how we're going to use Plutus and Haskell and being able to compile the JavaScript or WebAssembly for how we're going to carry that out and be able to reuse a lot of infrastructure that developers have come to know and love, like Node and uh, Chrome and these types of things, and frameworks like Angular and React and so forth, so they can augment their code and write things the proper way. So uh, I'm very excited about seeing that model leave the lab and enter into the uh, into the mind space of the ecosystem. It's, it's kind of like taking what Bitcoin started with ETXO accounting and then taking it to the next level and uh, being able to get great, wonderful smart contracts, but doing it in a way where you, they're easy to shard and they're easy to verify security properties and verify your developer intent is actually reflected in the code. It's a big problem with smart contracts right now. How do you know they're secure? How do you know what you've written is actually what the commercial agreement happens to be? In the case of the DAO fork, for example. Uh, so, you know, it, Plutus was built from the ground up to, to try to make that easier and also make it easier for you to coordinate with off-chain code. Because a lot of times when people build these dApps, they end up finding it simply too expensive and too time consuming and just too many resources are required to get it to completely work on Ethereum, for example. So what they do is they say, well, let's scale back and only keep certain components on Ethereum, but then put the rest on a trusted server you know, to handle all this really expensive stuff. Well then, is that really a decentralized application if it relies on a central authority? So what you need to do is have a much more reasonable model where you can break these things up and treat them as services, like microservices or a service-oriented architecture, and then say, okay, each part has its own purpose, and uh, the parts that are running on a server aren't going to hurt your security or your privacy, and the parts that are running on the blockchain are, are there for very good reasons, and they're enhancing your security and your privacy. And then you have a lot more control over all of the data that's produced and uh, the user experience uh, for the uh, uh, for your application. So we're, so that's what I'm most excited about. I think in the near term, because you know Shelley and Ouroboros, that that's great. And but you know I've been thinking about that for three years. We went to CCS and Eurocrypt and crypto. We've written like a dozen papers and all this stuff. It's a lot of work that's gone into that. So we kind of know where that story is going. It's it's almost like making a movie. You know. You, if by the time you get ready to release the movie to the general public, you've probably watched it 900 times, you know, <laughs> going through post and these things. So we know what that looks like, and we're excited about that. Uh, but, you know, the, the smart contract stuff is so much more exciting because it's two-way, two that relationship. It's not just what we think, 
developers are going to take that up, start building things, and then we get to see the fruits of their labors and talk to the developers and say, is this a good experience? It's not a good experience. And if we get it right, uh, you get what Ethereum got. You know, I went to F Denver uh, just a few days ago, and there was 2,000 people there and four floors of, de of, of developers just building cool, interesting experiences, mostly frustrated, but still trying to hack and do cool things. And so that's just tremendously rich and rewarding. And I, and I hope we're going to have an equivalent impact with Plutus, but do so in a way that's actually viable for Fortune 500 companies, governments, and people who are very serious about security and privacy. Well, great. Well, thank you so much for your time, Charles. And we'll uh, have you back on for an up another update a year from now. And uh, we might see you down at the conference in April. Absolutely. I'd love to have you guys come. It's going to be absolutely amazing. IOHKSummit.io. And uh, I cannot emphasize how much fun we're going to have at this conference. Cheers.